All right, in this video, we're going to take a look at the various conditions of demand, the factors that are going to shift it either to the right or left, right for an increase, left for a decrease. And the things you should be aware of in A-level, AS economics as well, are these several that I'm going to list. If you want to pause the video, write these down, that's fine, and then follow as I explain the next uh, few slides. Income is going to be a big factor, and I've put a picture of Louis Vuitton here so you can see uh, what are supposed to be Chinese shoppers lining up outside. Now, if you're an economic student, you are aware of the rise in incomes in China, and then that will lead to more people buying Louis Vuitton or luxury goods at each and every price. So a rise in income caused by economic development or some other reason or situation will cause an increase in demand. Again, the other side is true as well. If there is a recession or for some reason there is a decrease in incomes, then we should see a decrease in demand shifting it to the left. Interest rates, or and, uh, simply put, the cost of borrowing, if that is going to rise, then it makes it less attractive to borrow money. It also makes it more attractive to save. So if interest rates are lower or are decreasing, that could encourage people to spend more because they can borrow cheaper and there's less of an incentive to save your money at lower interest rates. The third one is advertising. And here you see Kobe Bryant advertising a Lenovo phone. I think everyone is very clear on the fact that he doesn't actually own this phone. He probably uses an iPhone. But by using Kobe Bryant in this advertisement, Lenovo is trying to drive up demand for their product. When we take a look at substitute goods, the example normally given in class is that of Coke and Pepsi. As long as you are indifferent between Coke and Pepsi, which means you don't care, um, you don't have a preference for either one, then when if they're equally priced, and let's say, for example, the price of Coca-Cola rises, then you'll buy more Pepsi. So if they're both priced at $1 and Coca-Cola doubles to $2, we should see the demand for Pepsi rise. And the other side of that is true. If the price of Coca-Cola drops relative to Pepsi, then Pepsi, the demand for those products will fall. Next, we want to take at complementary goods, and these are goods that tend to be consumed together. Uh, first, we can take a look at the Xbox on the left. Now, if Microsoft gave out free Xboxes, we could imagine that the demand for games would rise. If the price of Xboxes were cut in half, then again, you could imagine that demand for games would rise. And again, the other side of that being if the price of Xbox 360 were to rise, demand for games should fall. And there's also what's considered taste and fashion. Uh, what is currently in fashion? This image, if you're seeing it and you're a student, you know immediately that is not today's fashion. So clothing like this is not in demand. And you can probably guess what age or what era these kind of clothes were in demand. As fashion changes, as people's tastes change, they'll tend to demand more of what's in style, more of what's popular, and less of what's not. If you take a look at the population of the Earth, uh, this could be a global population. By examining, it could be a local population. This image happens to correspond to an international population. But if you look at population growth within a country, uh, that could be tied to either birth rates or increased immigration. Generally, we argue that increased population increases demand and then vice versa. Lower or decreased population decreased demand. And finally, you have weather. As you can see in the image on the top, it's a smoggy day in Beijing. On the bottom, it's a sunny day. So on the smoggy day, you can see the lady in the image has a mask on. So demand for masks will rise when the weather is smoggy. When it's clear, there will be less demand for masks, but greater demand for tickets to uh, public parks or tourist sites. So what I want you to do is really understand why demand will increase or decrease from each of these factors. And in the next part of this video, we're going to take a look at exactly how you graph that. In this video, we're going to see how you perfectly draw increases and decreases in demand. First thing you want to make sure that you do is put down your axes and make sure that you label them correctly. So you want to make sure you have y on your y axis labeled price and your x axis labeled quantity. Then when you draw on your demand curve, it's downward sloping, label it D. And when you increase it, you shift it to the right, new label D2, and make sure you include an arrow. Let's do the same thing for a decrease. 
We're going to put in our axes, label Y price, label X quantity, and then we're going to make sure that we draw a downward sloping demand curve, label it D, and with a decrease in demand, this time we shift to the left, and we can label it D1, D2, as long as it has a new label, we're okay. Hey guys, if you found this video helpful, please subscribe below or email me at enhancedtuition at gmail.com. Let me know how I can help you. Also, you can follow me on Twitter at Enhanced Tuition. I welcome any comments, questions, uh, anything you can send to me that can help you prepare for this class. Please do, and I'll do my best to put it together. Happy studying and good luck.